Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Azrin here. Uh, This video slash podcast is coming to you from my car. I'm sitting in a parking lot at the moment. And I wanted to talk today about decision making and how you can improve your decision making process to become a better language learner. Quick story for you. My whole life, decision making has been something that's hard for me. I remember when I was about five years old, something like that, maybe six at, at the oldest, I was in school and we had something like an open play time and we had different centers that we can play at. There was a sand table, there was a dress up, um, a dress up center, I suppose you can call it. There was an art center, so on and so forth. So we had some play time and we were able to choose where we, what center we wanted to play at. And I wanted to go to the sand table, but I wasn't allowed for a long story. But <laughs> so I'm looking at this card trying where we had all the different center options and I'm trying to figure out which one of these activities do I want to do. When we get to an activity, we have to cross it off essentially with an X. And I was like, man, which one do I want to do? Do I want to go to that one or that one or that one? And I sat there thinking about it for so long that I actually didn't even play at any of the centers. And so, as you can see, I am someone who, for my life, even when I was very, very young, I have found decision making to be quite difficult. And literally for less than 24 hours now, I've been implementing a different decision making process that I want to share with you today that's been helping me tremendously. And my hope is that this helps you with your decision making process, particularly in the frame, in the mindset rather, of being a better language learner. Now, here's what I used to do when it came to making decisions. I would think about whatever decision was in front of me, and I would sit there and ponder the decision to figure out which direction I should go. This would happen for even small decisions. So I'm in this parking lot right now. Typically, what I would have thought about is, should I take a parking spot that's a little bit further, or should I go a little bit drive further up and try and get a parking spot that's closer to where I'm trying to go. And I would have actually taken 45 seconds while I was driving to ponder that and think about that, debate that in my mind, (laughs) debate it in my mind, um, and try to come up with a decision. And frequently, I would just sit on the fence. And I would do that about all decisions, big and small. Lots Lots of decisions throughout the day. And maybe if you're watching this, you can relate to this. Maybe you're trying to figure out what app you should use to learn a language, what class you should take, what time your class should be, what time you should be doing your studying. You're trying to figure out which one is better for you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Indecisive people, I don't need to explain what's going through your mind, okay? Now, what I've been doing recently, literally the past 24 hours, and it's been amazing. It's been, I like it a lot more, is I try to make more decisions every day. I try to make more decisions. It's not necessarily making decisions faster, although when you make more decisions, I suppose you make decisions faster, but I'm trying to make more decisions. Here's what I've realized. I've realized that when I have a decision in front of me that I'm indecisive about, I don't know what pathway I should move forward with. For me anyway, what it actually means is that there are probably smaller decisions that play into the bigger decision. And I have to make smaller decisions, lots of micro decisions, before I can make the the, the bigger decision that needs to be made. So that's something I've been doing, especially when it's a bigger thing. So I'll I'll give you an example. Right now I'm working on uh, some new services at my business, the Calgary Language Nerds. We offer private and small group classes for a whole bunch of languages. I want to offer some different types of classes. I'm not going to share exactly what direction I'm going, but I want to switch up the program offering. I'm building right now a couple of different web pages to advertise and describe the new programs that I'm launching. And so yesterday, last night, or yesterday evening rather, I was working on one of these pages. And typically I would get to a part, normally before yesterday, I would get to a, what I would do is I'd get to a part of the page, not know what to type, for example, what words to use and sit there and think about it to figure out, well, what word should I type in that sentence or what words should I type in that paragraph? For example, what picture should I put on that part of the website? Whereas yesterday what I was doing and it it moved things along a lot faster is I thought, well, I don't know what picture I should put on the, on the website, but 
I do know that there needs to be a picture that's about this size. So let me just, let me make a micro decision of opening up the app I use to edit photos. Let me just open that up and let me just open a page that has that size. That's a micro decision. I can make that decision really easily because I know I need to do it. Once it's open, I was like, okay, well, look, I, I, I don't know what picture I need to pick because that's so difficult to figure out, but I know what the course offering is. And when I think of this course offering, a small decision I could make is to throw on uh, a picture that's at least somewhat related to the program. It's a French program. I was like, let's just throw a French flag. I don't know. And then I was like, well, I was looking at this. I was like, I don't know if this is the picture I need. I have no idea. But I do know that a picture has to go on the website and it takes a second for the picture to upload. Let me just go upload the French flag for the time being. So it was like three decisions that, ma that were made in the span of like, I don't know, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, I don't know how much. And by making more decisions, I found that I'm able to move things forward a lot faster than when I ponder things in my mind and just try to analyze a situation. So lots of small micro decisions has been helping me move things along much faster. Now, a few more concepts that have been helping me as, as well in this whole decision-making process. Number one is I've been thinking about what decisions are reversible versus not reversible. So something like the picture on my website is very reversible. I can make the picture, post it, or rather upload it, and then be like, oh, that doesn't look good at all. And then I can change it really quickly, really easily. It's a highly reversible decision. So what I've decided is if something's highly reversible, I don't need to overthink it because I can just do it, see what happens, and then go back on my decision. Or not go back on the decision, but change change the decision. The second part of that coin, the other side of that coin for reversibility is the, uh, is the impact, the importance of the decision. So for example, um, perhaps you could break up with someone. This is a non-language example. In theory, you can break up with someone really quickly if you're dating them. You could say, well, it's a highly reversible decision. I can break up with them, which is theoretically true, but the impact of that decision might be quite large, might be quite significant if you've been dating that person really for any extended amount of time. So if you're trying to make a decision around, you know, breaking up or something or dating someone, maybe, may, maybe you might decide, okay, wait a second, this is something I need to spend a little bit more time thinking about because the impact of the decision is quite high. It's higher than, for example, the picture that I put on the website. So if it's highly reversible, meaning I can quickly and easily reverse the decision, change my mind, and it's low impact, low importance, like the impact of it is relatively, you know, the, 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 the consequences of changing my mind and reversing decision are quite small or non-existent, I just make those decisions really, really quickly. Right, so that's something I mean, that's some that's something that's been helping me quite a bit as well. And so for your language learning, you can do the same thing. It's like, should I study in the mornings or nights? Well, it's highly reversible. You could decide mornings, and then two days later be like, I don't like this, and make it nights. You can say use this app or that app. Let's say they both have a free trial. Well, just pick one because it's a highly reversible decision and it's a low impact decision. You could spend two hours on one app, be like, I don't like this, cancel your free trial, start the second app off you go. It's super reversible, low impact, right? So those kinds of decisions can be made very, very quickly. Um, the last concept that I'll walk you through here that has been helping me with decision making is thinking about worst and best case scenarios. So worst case scenario is playing out, well, what's the worst thing that's going to happen if I, make this, if I make this decision? I pay for this language class, I pay for this app, I pay for whatever. What's the worst thing that's going to happen, right? And then ask yourself what you would do if that worst case scenario happened. So for example, you know, um, I've been thinking of taking this one course, right? There's a course I want to take. It's a business course. And I was like, should I take it? It's going to be kind of expensive. Uh, it, it would probably run me something in the range of like, well, it, it's expensive. I'd have to do the exact math, but it would be expensive for my, for my budget, right? And I was like, ooh, I feel like, I don't know if I should do this. So I thought to myself, well, worst case scenario is I'm going to be out this money. It's, oh, hang on. There we go. Sorry, I don't know if the recording stopped. It might have stopped there. Someone called me while I was doing this. But anyway, so I thought to myself, the worst, <laughs> sorry if there's an awkward pause. 
Um, but the worst case scenario would be like, I take the class, I'm out the money, and I don't learn anything, and then I wouldn't be able to use that money, in my case, for a trip, because that would be a little bit of savings I might use for a trip usually. I can't use that money for a trip in the near future. I probably need to save up for an extra six months. And I go, okay, how would I handle that situation? Would I be able to save up money faster? Would I not be able to? Like, what would I do in that situation? And would I be willing to would I be willing to to live with the worst case scenario? That's a great thing to ask yourself. And ask yourself what's the best case scenario? So for this business course, I thought to myself, well, the best case scenario is I learn something that becomes the unlock that allows me to five or 10x my business really quickly or relatively quickly. I was like, wow, that would be amazing. And so having those two extremes can now help me decide, okay, this is the worst case scenario. Should I, would I be okay with this if it happened? What would I do if it did happen? And here's the best case scenario. And that information often can, can uh, point the way forward for me. So that, that's basically this video that to summarize everything, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you understand the decision-making framework I've been following recently so that you can use that, hopefully pull something away from that framework that allows you to make uh, better and faster decisions to therefore make faster progress in whatever language that you're trying to learn. And maybe between us, maybe you can pull something out of this that helps you make decisions in your life as a general whole, okay? Thank you for watching this slash listening on the podcast. I, I hope you found it helpful and uh, we'll chat soon. Bye-bye.